Okay, I'm going to demonstrate uh, a few diagnostic things you can do with your uh, hop-up and bucking and uh, some general remedies uh, for problems that you may find. Uh, the first test you'll want to do when you set up a hop-up uh, barrel and bucking is uh, do what I call the BB drop test. You'll take your hop-up and barrel and take a BB and just drop it into the BB feed tube. And the BB should, you can see that there, drop all the way into the hop-up and not get hung up in the tube. If it gets hung up in the tube, it's getting caught on the bucking lips and that'll cause bucking lip jams. So take your hop-up, drop the BB through, and it should fall right into the hop-up instead of getting stuck in the tube. Um, here's an example of where this is getting stuck. This is a, a different type of hop-up, but it has the same kind of problem. You can actually see the uh, bucking intruding into the BB feed tube area. But if I drop the BB, you can see it stops right there. It does not go into the hop-up. And it actually needs to be uh, pressed through with a bit of force to get it into the hop-up. So if this is the case, what's going to happen is when the BBs feed, especially at the higher rate of fire, it's going to catch on the bucking lip right there. And that's going to fold in and get caught underneath the BB. And that uh, makes a, a jam that you can only undo with an unjamming rod. So that's, a, that's not a good thing to have. Now, how do you solve that problem? Uh, there are two ways to solve it. You could take the bucking and you can cut down the lips. You can sand them down and I'll show you how, you, um, how I recommend you do that. But you can sand down the lips so they don't intrude into the hop-up area uh, as much. Uh, the second thing you can do is get a Dremel tool. I'm just going to point to it here. But get a Dremel tool and actually make the BB feed tube oval shaped at the top. You would take a, a bit and kind of run it carefully across the top. You can actually look at it from this angle with your bit running inside of here and make it oval shaped. So when you drop the BB in, it will actually go around the bucking and then into the hop up. And that could help prevent some of the bucking lip fold jams uh, by making that oval shaped. This is a bit I like to use when I uh, want to profile the uh, BB feed tube on a hop up. Um, this bit uh, does a nice job. You just have to be very careful and do it very slowly and don't over uh, over dremel your hop up. You want to make sure it's just enough to allow the BB to get around the bucking lips and not any more um, as you may cause some other problems by just uh, profiling it too far. The second test you'll want to do is the push through test. Uh, once you've got the BBs falling through your hop-up, you want to make sure that the BB actually goes through the bucking cleanly and without with very little resistance. So there's a BB inside this hop-up and you just want to take a tool and just push it. And it should very easily go right through the bucking. This is obviously with the hop-up turned off. You want everything turned off or even removed, but the BB should just feed nice and easily through there with very very little resistance or no resistance at all. <clears throat> You'll see that there are two problems. Sometimes it's the bucking that causes the issue where the push through test will fail or the hop up design itself. Here's a Mad Bull Ultimate hop up and I'm going to demonstrate the, uh, the BB drop test. It has this little o-ring that's at the top here uh, which can actually interfere with the feeding of the BBs. It's meant to keep BBs from falling out when you exchange mags but I, I recommend you take that o-ring out just so you get the uh, cleanest feed of BBs up the BB feed tube. But nonetheless, I'll push it past that. And this hop-up actually is very narrow. And you can see it's binding a little bit in there. It fails the hop-up drop test. It doesn't fall all the way through. Though it's very, very little resistance. I think it's just kind of gummed up inside there a little bit. But once the BB's inside the hop-up and I try the push-through test, you can tell that's a lot harder to test or to push the BB through. I'll put it back in here again and show you just by pushing. It takes quite a bit of force. And that's because the hop-up design right here where the shoulders of the bucking meet the uh, the opening for the BB feed tube is too narrow. And it squeezes the, uh, the bucking lips down and it makes it very difficult for the BB to push through. Um, the bucking that's in here is a purple promi bucking and um, I have an example of that in one of these Pro Winds and that here's a, a purple prime bucking and I'll show that that isn't a bucking issue because I can put this bucking on this barrel 
put it into a pro win and feed a BB through and you'll see that it pushes through very easily uh, with very little resistance there you go not even any resistance it just fed right through uh, another thing that could cause the problem is the um, is the bucking itself so you can see that the BBs feed through fine on the pro win but here's a, a Prometheus Delta strike barrel <coughs> that comes with a blue their blue uh, clean bucking and I'll put this in this pro win and we'll try the uh, drop test fell right through so no problem there let's try the push through test there's actually a lot of force against it and that's just due to the design of the bucking itself it um, it's a little too thick and the lips are too narrow and the material is too sticky and it really takes a lot of force uh, in fact in some hop-ups especially if you put this bucking in this hop-up uh, the combination it makes it nearly impossible to push the BB through so you want to make sure that the BB goes through very easily or you're gonna risk running into all sorts of feeding jams um, the way this is fixed uh, there's two ways to fix it one just never use this purple or blue <coughs> excuse me blue promy bucking it's terrible uh, I had a whole bunch I just discarded them all don't use this um, if you need to fix the hop up you can actually drill out this area put a drill bit through here that's slightly larger and make this area a little bit larger so it doesn't bind on the bucking lips if the bucking is causing the problem again like this just don't use this bucking it's it's terrible okay so that was the drop test and the push through test uh, let me show you a couple other things that cause problems in some of these hop-ups especially with the pro win and the maple leaf which is a, a, a popular combination in fact that's the, the combination I like to use but there are some things that are sometimes out of spec that can cause some issues first of all the 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 maple leaf has very long bucking lips um, which sometimes or in some pro win hop-ups will actually cause a failure on the drop test uh, for some reason it's working fine on both of these pro wins uh, but I've had it fail before so I've had to uh, dremel out the pro win to allow uh, make it more oval shaped so the BB can go around it but this maple leaf has what I call very thick shoulders that's this area right here right behind the lips um, so when I put this Mad Bull barrel, this is a stock Mad Bull 603 barrel. I put this bucking on here. Let's make sure I get this aligned properly. And I'll put it into the Pro Win. You might be able to see this, it's very slight. But the C clip slot is not flush against this cutaway here. It, you have to push really hard to make that fit and it really shouldn't be that way um, it should align right at the edge um, I can demonstrate this with a different barrel and bucking I'll take this purple for example put this in here and you can see that that goes straight flush to the edge so the C clip will cleanly go onto this bear onto this hop up with this Mad Bull combination and with the maple leaf it doesn't go all the way in oops it doesn't go all the way in because the shoulders on the maple leaf are too thick uh, well there's really two ways to solve that one use a different bucking but I actually like the maple leaf quite a bit but for this what I end up doing is I'll take the the Mad Bull barrel and I'll narrow the bridge this is what I call the bridge this part right here I will cut that down and you can see here's an example of a stock Mad Bull and one that I've laid down just a little bit to make this bridge just a tiny bit more narrow probably about half a millimeter or so is all that's needed so now when I put the maple leaf bucking on here and I put this into the pro in you can see that the C clip slot aligns right with the edge of the pro in and the clip will go on cleanly so um, I'll, I'll, in, I'll show some footage of how I do this on the lathe. I basically lathe this down and then reprofile it so there's no sharp edges on it, but just make that really narrow. There's actually quite a few differences in bridge sizes. You can actually see that between these two barrels, and I have another barrel here. 
uh, this Bravo barrel, and which has a really thick bridge. Now, it all depends on where they cut their slots for the C-clip, but uh, th those are very difficult to recut cleanly, so it's easier just to narrow down the bridge section if you need to adjust the positioning of uh, the C-clip slot. Uh, I'll come back to this Bravo barrel in a second and some other issues here. But, uh, so that's one thing you want to do when you assemble these things. You can see that I can take, here's the stock Mad Bull. I put this Prami purple bucking on here, which doesn't have as thick of shoulders. And I'll, I'll slide this in. And you can see that without any modification, this goes right up to the edge. So that should work just fine. So it's a combination of the maple leaf and the Mad Bull barrel, or any barrel that has a, a thicker window there. Um, one way to adjust that again is to cut down the edge length of the barrel. <clears throat> okay, back to this Bravo barrel here. I wanted to show some differences of barrel quality. Um, again, I prefer the Mad Bull 603s. They're inexpensive and they perform very well. If you have problems with it, you can just get another one. They're not the $100 barrel. They're $30, so it's much better. But you can see the, the size of the window difference between these two. One, this Bravo barrel has this slanted cut, which I prefer not to use. You'll find that on some barrels, I don't like the slanted cut what, at all. I like the nice large square window. It fits the maple leaf very nicely and our hops and other types of hops that you can do. But you can see that this is so much larger than this tiny one on this Bravo barrel. Um, so I would avoid any barrel that has this slanted cut. Um, just make note of that when you take a look at these, these barrel windows, there is a difference. And the depth of the window makes a difference on how wide this window space is. If it's not cut very deep, this will be very narrow and will only allow very narrow uh, nubs to fit through that. So you actually want a very deep window as well, which allows the bucking to go all the way down. Another thing you want to look for when you're dealing with uh, hop-ups, uh, and particularly with the fusion engine, I'll demonstrate this here, when the hop-up and the engine are in installed in a gun, you want to make sure that the hop-up is completely flush against the face of the fusion engine, or against the gearbox for that matter. There shouldn't be any space between here and here. It should be totally flush. If there's any space in between that, one, it's going to make your nozzle not make a clean seal, and two, it, it will misalign the BB feed tube with your magazine. So that needs to be flush up against there. And uh, traditionally, this is done by using springs on the hop-up into the upper receiver, and that kind of pushes it toward the, uh, the gearbox or the engine. <clears throat> More recently, uh, I like to use these O-rings. These are 011 or 011 sized O-rings uh, that you put right on the inner barrel and in front of the hop-up, and you can put as many as you need to make sure that when you put it inside of a receiver, like I show here, that the spacing is just right. When you assemble the lower, you want to make sure that this pushes right up against the engine and that this doesn't move forward or backward. If it moves, add another O-ring and then try it again until you have it to right where you squeeze it all together or assemble it. It's perfectly locked in place, doesn't move forward or backward, and it's completely flush against the front cylinder. Uh, one of the things you want to be careful of is not all hop-ups fit cleanly into the front cylinder like this does. You can see the pro one fits just nicely inside there. The, uh, the Mad Bull Ultimate actually fits nicely in there. But here's a G&G stock hop-up, and you can see that it doesn't fit cleanly. In fact, you can fit it if you really push hard against it, and you can see that that actually is jammed right in there. Um, so commonly, if you use a G&G stock hop-up, particularly with a fusion engine, uh, you'll find that you see them assembled like this and they're not flush and you're going to get a very poor air seal, inconsistent shooting, and this won't line up with your magazines very well. So the way to solve that is to actually sand this down until it fits cleanly inside there. And I tend to do that on a lathe that makes it a lot easier, but you can hand sand that down. The alternative to do is actually drill this a little bit larger there, but that's a little bit more destructive and probably not necessary. Just modify the hop up just a little bit so it slides cleanly. So when you assemble the gun, it's always completely seated against the face of the hop up.
excuse me, against the face of the engine. All right, another test you'll want to do is the air seal test. And to check and see that there is a solid air seal between your barrel and your fusion engine is uh, you'll want to blow air down the inner barrel when the gun is assembled. Now, I'm doing this outside of the gun so you can see all the parts. But when this hop-up is pressed up against the face of the fusion engine, what I like to do, and I'm showing this with a shorter barrel here, is I take a piece of uh, spare macro line and I'll insert this into the barrel and then you blow into it. And you can tell that there's a very solid air seal if you, if you have a lot of resistance when you blow into the barrel. If you uh, hear something that sounds like this, where air flows cleanly through, then you have a poor air seal and um, you're going to get very inconsistent shots. It probably won't make a 100% seal. It's very rare to have a 100% seal, actually. Um, honestly, because some air leaks right out of that little uh, alignment groove there. Um, but as long as there's significant resistance, you'll get a really decent seal and uh, your consistency will go will be much better. But uh, using just a spare piece of macro line in the barrel, uh, when this is assembled inside the gun, so you can actually test this, uh, you can actually make sure that there's a, a, a solid air seal. And you can do this with the fusion engine because the nozzle's always fully forward and it's a closed system, so there's no leakage at all with the air. Uh, this also is another nifty little trick. If you find that your BBs are shooting to the left or to the right consistently, it generally means that either your bucking's misaligned or your barrel's turned just slightly in your hop-up. Well, you can actually uh, adjust that sometimes with, uh, an, again, a piece of macro line. When it's inside your gun, insert the macro line. You can tell that's a pretty snug fit there. And you can actually just turn it just a little bit and you can rotate your barrel while it's in the gun and then you can test fire it to see if it's to get it shooting straight instead of left or hooking left to the right. A uh, piece of macro line is very helpful for that so you don't have to keep taking it all apart. Just tweak it from the outside and adjust the uh, turn of your barrel. You can't do it too significantly or you'll um, misalign it with the C-clip and then you may have some other problems there but if it's if it's off by a millimeter or so you might be able to rotate it enough to get the uh, the BBs to shoot straight.